the tranquility of Goa is usually synonymous with pristine beaches and stunning vistas. But Goa also presents an astonishing diversity of habitats and ecosystems. The smallest state of India is influenced by two global biomes, the aquatic and the terrestrial. Each of these biomes consists of many ecosystems that have adapted to differences in climatic and environmental changes. It also includes several wetlands with intricate networks of creeks and backwaters. There are seven major estuaries that are found along the Goan coast which are studded with mangrove vegetation. Mangroves are an assemblage of tropical trees, roots and shrubs that grow in the intertidal zone. Just across the river from Panjim city is an oasis of biodiversity. Including a unique resident. the smooth-coated otter. I've been studying otters for almost 12 years now. To me, a smooth-coated otter is an apex predator that has a very interesting lifestyle. It is a, a very smart, very gregarious animal. Smooth-coated otters are distributed across South and Southeast Asia. They are found throughout the Indian subcontinent and in isolated pockets in Iran and Iraq. These shy, elusive and playful mammals are semi-aquatic and depend on clean waterways and good vegetative cover for survival. They communicate with chirps, hisses, whistles and growls. They're social animals, they're extremely social animals. They do everything uh, together, they forage together, they um, rest together, they den together. Unfortunately, their population size has declined over the years due to severe habitat loss and fragmentation. There is a need to understand the smooth-coated otters better. We're a small organization that works essentially in the research field. Right now, the majority of time has been spent on uh, smooth-coated otters. Research is one side of the equation for us, you know. There is a much broader scope of what we do here at Wild Otters. Education and getting people to be observational about the world is a key focus area. Otters needed uh, more attention, more data was needed. Katrina and Shitij with their organization Wild Otters Research study the ecology of various habitat types across Goa and Karnataka using the otter as a focal species. As scientists, they aim to better understand the species, the habitats they occupy and the threats they face in order to secure their future. So we follow indirect signs, so it's scat, uh, tail drags, pomp prints, uh, things like that. And then on to top of all of that, we place camera traps in these locations uh, and collect all the behavioral data that we possibly can. We got quite a lot of information. So first off, we got a lot of species interactions or rather species interactions in that space. Uh, there was mongooses uh, using the same area. There was crocodiles uh, using the same pathways right in front of the den to come up and down from the river onto land. The camera traps also caught something disturbing. There was a lot of uh, feral dogs coming into this area. In fact, we had a lot of conflict videos recorded of uh, feral dogs attacking otters at these den sites. <coughs> otters are susceptible to rabies, they're susceptible to parvovirus, they're susceptible to uh, canine distemper as well. 
Otters are the topmost predators in aquatic systems. Their presence indicates the health of wetland ecosystems, which makes them ideal ambassadors for mangrove forests. Mangroves form a vital part of an otter's habitat. The trees and root system act as sanctuaries for many fish species, which is the main diet of these mammals. Mangrove forests are also very important for humans. They protect the tropical coastlines from storms and cyclones while also playing a huge role in providing refuge for breeding fish, which increases the source of livelihood for fish folk. Otters coexist with human-dominated landscapes. Centuries ago, Goa's fishing community constructed bunds as a traditional method of fish practice. These bunts fitted with wooden sluice gates brought them a large cache of fish with the oncoming tide. Otters prefer to feed here since there is readily available prey. But this makes the fishing community quite unhappy. Fish folk increasingly see a negative side to the presence of otters since it directly impacts their livelihoods. In an attempt to free themselves, trapped otters also end up damaging nets and are known to drown in them. To counter this, Wild Otters Research use their outreach programs to inform fish folk the benefits of having otters around. I think we have made an impact also in the way fishermen uh, and the local people here feel some affinity towards the animal. Involving the local government, fishermen and people from outside the state or within the state who come and visit us for our programs. There is a certain sense of understanding that has certainly improved about the ecosystem and what otters are as a whole. And that's a start. I think it's important for people to realize that there are a lot more mammals in this country than the charismatic ones that are uh, showcased. And they play a very large part of our ecosystems. And if we lose those, uh, there can be a lot of cascading in those ecosystems. Well, the smooth-coated otter is a very versatile species. It adapted very well to a lot of human disturbance. There are things and insights that we learn about smooth-coated otters. They're doing better than we would have thought they can adapt to. In urban landscapes, where the smooth-coated otter is increasingly present, it's critical for humans sharing the same space to understand their importance so there could be sustainable coexistence for both animals as well as people. Countering the fragmentation of wetlands, restoration of degraded habitats and documentation of their distribution is a positive action for their long-term conservation and also for their survival. <laughs>